Hello, BWHA38 here. Today I'm going to show you how to program a General Electric MLS2 radio using a USB programming cable. General Electric made an MLS radio and an MLS2. They both look pretty much the same from the outside. The one way to really tell is to look at the comb number on the bottom of the radio. And any comb number that ends in a 1 will indicate that that is an MLS2 radio. Uh, this comb number is MLSH041, and the 1 indicates MLS2. The MLS2 radios are PC programmable with a serial cable, and uh, that's what we're going to do today. I'm using a USB-based serial cable, and um, the other end has the MLS mic connector on it. This is an 8-pin connector, and on this particular cable I've indicated which side of the connector should be facing up. That way you get the uh, cable connected correctly. There are a few things, though, that we have to do ahead of plugging this in and plugging it into the radio, and I'll get to that right now. The first thing we have to do is to download the Prolific 2303 driver for this cable. And uh, if you do a Google search for Prolific USB PL2303 driver, you're going to find that fairly easily. It's only about a 3 megabit megabyte file, and once you download it, it's simply a matter of installing that. It doesn't take very long for that to take place. The software wants the programming cable to be either COM1 or COM2. Um, typically when you install the, the 2303 driver, uh, if you have other COM ports already active, it's going to make it some number 3 and higher. Uh, 5, I've had it as high as 7, and uh, the software just won't recognize that when it's set that way. So in order to make sure that the uh, cable is actually the COM1 or 2. We need to plug the cable in and go into the device manager on the computer and set it as that. At this point I've plugged the cable in. Uh, it, the computer recognized the cable and installed the software and I've gone into the device manager of this Windows machine and you'll notice that the prolific USB to serial COM is now set at COM3. This is the problem we need to fix. Simply right click on this and choose properties. Go into the port settings and choose advanced. In this dialog box we have the choice of ch changing the COM port number and if we slide up to the top we can see that COM1 and COM2 are available. I'm going to go ahead and use COM1 and set this device for COM1. And then just close out the other dialog windows. Once we've made sure that the cable is set to COM1, I'm going to go ahead and turn the radio off as I plug in the connector. Uh, the connector just goes into the mic uh, jack on the back. It's actually an 8-pin connector. And it just slides on. Uh, incidentally, if you're wanting to know which pin is which, um, pin 1 is closer to the interior of the radio, and pin 8 is actually closer to the outside edge of the radio. We're now ready to power on the radio, 
and we can also launch the MLS2 software at this time. The MLS2 software looks very similar to the MVS software that uh, I had a movie earlier about. Uh, in this particular case, the software is ready to read the radio, and that's simply by we'll do that by simply pressing F6. We need to give our file a name, and again, I'll use new for this, and press F1 to continue. The software will show the reading radio personality dialog, and it will verify this, and then uh, the radio should um, click. In this case, it doesn't beep. Also, while the radio is being read, it will show either a zero or a double zero in the dis channel display. I now have the file new that I will take a look at by pressing F2. This is a 16 channel radio and so the first eight channels are shown here. To toggle through the software when you're using frequencies that are outside of the 150 to 174 megahertz band split, you need to hold the control key down and press the E key. That will let you toggle through the software line by line. Channel Guard is General Electric's version of the PL and DPL. You can place a PL tone on the transmit and the receive, or just one or the other. The STE column refers to the squelch tail elimination. Uh, I have it set to no on all the frequencies that I use for two meters. But if you were using this on a business band repeater and didn't want the kerchunking that you commonly hear at the end of a transmission, you could enable that on this radio. The last column is CCT, and it has to do with the timeout for transmission. To set that, you press the F7 option button, and it lets you set the carrier con control timer to the nearest minute or half minute, and you input that by pressing the numbers on your keypad. In this case, I have the uh, carrier control timeout set at three minutes. Press escape to put that dialog away. When you're finished making all of your changes, you simply want to press F10 to go back. And at this point, you're going to save the file. After you've saved the file, you're now ready to program the radio. By pressing F5, you will place the file, in this case, named new, into the radio. Press F1 to continue. You'll see a writing radio personality dialog box. It will verify this procedure, and then the radio should click once more once it's finished. The radio has now been programmed with this file. I hope you found this video to be helpful in your programming of your MLS2 radio.